so the, uh, we, we know that the rural urban gap widened over the last uh, uh, 30, 30 years. The China has, has, a, uh, has been for a long time a dual society because this is the rural urban separation, uh, not only the economically but also socially. So industrialization at the time put a priority on heavy industry. So that's the, at the cost of the uh, development of rural areas. Then the, over the last 30 years, with the rapid development of urban economy, then the income gap between rural and urban widened and widened. At this moment, uh, the nominal wage difference between urban and uh, rural, uh, rural population is 3.1. Uh, to one. So it means the urban residents earn the three times the income compared to the rural population. On the other hand, if we include in all these kind of the privileges or subsidies uh, in housing, in education, in Medicare, in the social welfare systems, then the, the, the ratio between urban uh, to the rural could be more than four. It means the urban they get the four times the income on the welfare compared to rural areas. So this has become a real big issue in China for the future development. Yeah. Uh, then we, I, I already mentioned the rural urban migration. At this moment, the rural urban migration uh, uh, migrants uh, amounted to at least uh, 140 million at this moment. Some estimations said now that about uh, 200 million rural population are now working in the urban area or in the coastal area. So this maintains its momentum, were maintained uh, even with the economic uh, downside over the last two years, but uh, the, these kind of migrants, uh, especially the migrant workers, still they remain in the urban area, in the coastal areas. But of course, how to integrate these rural migrants into the urban mainstream society is a become bigger societal issue in China. Because in China, as I mentioned, that's the rural urban separation. The migrants, they work in the urban area, but they do not uh, enjoy the same uh, social welfare, uh, the education uh, right, entitlement, or other uh, these kind of the basic rights in uh, China's urban areas. So these are big issues. So that's what we can say. The Chinese cities are divided. Uh, we, in China, we have the uh, 550 million permanent urban residents with 140 million migrants. So this is the, the separate, the city is divided. Uh, the w one city, we got a two system or two word at this moment in China. Yeah. Uh, then the, another major issue uh, worthwhile to mention is that China's the sex ratio at birth in selected years. We, I will talk to this. This has become a serious issue in China. Uh, in, uh, before 1982 uh, or something, we can say that before the, the third uh, population census, uh, the more or less the, uh, the birth rate at birth, uh, sex ratio at birth is more or less at the same, uh, at the uh, normal, uh, normal range. But we can see that uh, the, the ratio increase uh, year by year at this moment. Uh, the sex ratio at birth is around 120. So it means every 100 baby girls, there will be 120 baby boys. So it's more than 10% uh, uh, excess uh, birth of the Chinese boys. So this, uh, although the government, in the early years, uh, the government and the scholars, we think maybe this uh, distortion is mainly caused by the uh, mis misreporting of the uh, birth report. But more and more we realize this is a real situation, uh, real. So it means this will create a bigger uh, consequence in China in the future. So for example, uh, according to the projections, by the year 2025, uh, among the population age groupers between 25 to 40, usually people get married in that 25 to 40 years age groupers. There will be 30, 30 million more men than, uh, than women. So it means roughly about 30 million Chinese men cannot find a wife in 20 years time. So this really become very serious social issues. Uh, that uh, may cause a lot of the social disturbance by that time. 
and this will we call the marriage squeeze. And the majority of this kind of the, uh, this kind of the young men will be living in these kind of poor mountain areas in the inland areas, because this, with this kind of migration, these kind of young girls are migrant from rural area, from mountain area, area to the coast area, to the bigger cities. So it's no problem for the urban residents to find their wife, but this makes this kind of rural area, this situation, even worse. So this uh, where uh, the traffic of the uh, wives uh, and also the the a lot of the criminals related to the uh, to these kind of issues uh, will be the bigger concern of the society. So this will affect the family patterns, may change, uh, may uh, the social stability. Uh, just sometimes I. Uh, in the uh, in the evening when I wake up, sometimes I just uh, like a nightmare. Just thinking about the 30 million young men want, want to find a wife, but just uh, there are enough, not enough girls to be available. So someone said, okay, some suggest that maybe we can import a lot of bride from India. <laughs> yeah, but thinking about the 30 million, how can China import uh, girls from other countries in a such a large number, so it's impossible. So export you, men. yeah, <laughs> export the man to Dutch, yeah, yeah. So that's become a very serious social problem. Yeah. Uh, so that's the I think now the the current Chinese popular in general structure as general pictures. I think I have already used out my time. Well, I give you another five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, I think that at this moment we are in, really in some dilemmas for the policies. So regarding total population, we have already very low fertility. Uh, and every family we have the less than two children. And the Chinese, fa Chinese the, in the urban area is less than one child per family. So it's a very little room for the further reduction of the fertility. But on the other hand, the Chinese population will continue to grow. So this will create an even bigger the uh, environmental pressures uh, and uh, create a bigger this kind of the uh, problem for China in the future to develop. Uh, so that's uh, one of the problems. Then we have the age structures. We have the very rapid population aging uh, process. But if we try to slow down the aging process, we, if we relax the population control at this moment, or we still maintain the rigid population policy, then the, the aging will create a bigger problem for China in the future. But if we relax the population uh, programs, then this will make China total population even bigger than what expected. Uh, and also, the third dilemma is related to the population distribution. As I mentioned to you earlier, more and more Chinese are moved to the coastal areas. But with the, uh, with the global warming, with this kind of the, in the future, if the sea rise, uh, sea level rise, then all these kind of Chinese cities along the coastal areas will suffer from these kind of things. So this creates some kind of uncertainty in the future. How if the, of course, at this moment, China, inland China is very fragile in terms of uh, environment. So the government, the purposely would like to encourage Chinese uh, people in the inland move to the coastal areas. But of course, if the, the uh, climate change happened, or really the sea level rise uh, in uh, unexpected uh, uh, speed, then where are Chinese to, to live in the future? Because at this moment, majority of the Chinese will live in the coast area, but if the coast area all flooded, where, where we will go? So that's become some kind of the debate. Basically, is, uh, uh, in China, uh, the internal debate on whether the China should implement the very rigid population policy or not is always a debate. I returned to, chi to China in 1988 after my, uh, I got my PhD from the London School of Economics. I think uh, since the, over the last uh, more than 20 years, there is always an internal debate on whether the rigid population policy should be there, what, what we should do to modify the policy, whether we should change the policy itself, whether we should change the, the methodologies or approaches of the uh, programs. So there always a debate. But this kind of debate was become very heated and uh, even open debate over the last five, uh, five years. The basically, the 